Hello everyone! This week is National Pollinator Week in the United States, so I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about a really important pollinator, native bees. I've talked before about honeybees, but what you might not know is that honeybees are not native to the United States. As the name might suggest, the European honeybee Apis mellifera is from Europe, but was brought over by U.S. colonists. It's now found in the wild and in captivity across the country. While honeybees are very important for agriculture and for producing honey, they are not the most important pollinators. That title falls to the thousands of species of native bee across the world. Bees are in the order Hymenoptera, which also includes ants, wasps, and sawflies. They're in the superfamily Apoidae, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, which consists of over 20,000 species of bees. So honeybees are only one of these species, and even bumblebees, one of my favorites, only consist of a few hundred of the thousands of bee species. So there are thousands of bee species in your backyard that you probably don't even know about. When you think of bees, you probably think of hives, but the majority of bees are solitary bees. That means they go throughout their life without a family or social group that they live in. An example of a group of native bees is carpenter bees, members of the genus Xylocopa. They look a bit like bumblebees, but their name comes from the way that they nest. They're mostly solitary and they tunnel into wood and overwinter there as well. They feed on pollen and nectar like all other bees and they're also capable of nectar robbing. Nectar robbing is a behavior you see in a lot of bees. If a bee's tongue is too short to reach the nectar in a flower, it will go to the side of the flower, bite a hole, and get the nectar through there. I also recently saw a sweat bee, which is a common name that refers to a large group of bees. They're all rather small and they get their name because they're attracted to the salt in human sweat. This little guy landed on my backpack, hung out for a bit, and then flew off. So there are thousands of species of native bees that need your help, from tiny sweat bees to bulky bumblebees. You can help by planting flowers, making sure to plant them in clumps. One bee will visit literally thousands of flowers a day, so you can help by providing pollen and nectar that is becoming even more rare in today's age. You can help by putting out a native bee house, putting out water for bees since they need water too, and by stopping the use of chemical pesticides and herbicides. I've included links to resources and instructions in the description. Here is a shot of my family adding a little bag of leaf cutter bees to a native bee house that we recently put in. Happy Pollinator Week! I encourage you to check out the links in the description and to take some time this week to do something to help native bees. Yesterday I went out to try to find some bees and I was able to find some bumblebees. I'm pretty sure they were eastern common bumblebees and I think I found their nest, so here's some footage of that. <laughs> Here you can see a bumblebee coming out of the undergrowth. Unless they're a queen looking for a new nest site, bumblebees won't typically go on the ground unless they're coming or going from their nest. I have also been reading the book A Sting in the Tail by Dave Golson, which I highly recommend. It's all about bumblebees, but has a lot of great information about pollinators in general. I recently launched a web store on the Brilliant Botany website where you can get these awesome pollinator sticker packs to show off your love of pollinators. It's three sturdy vinyl stickers that you can put on your car, your laptop, whatever you like. You can also pre-order some adorable bee buttons. The proceeds from the sale of these stickers and buttons goes to funding my education work where I go out and educate people about pollinators. And while I'm posting this, I am on my way to VidCon. If you're not familiar with VidCon, it is the biggest conference for all things online video. If you're going to be there, let me know in the comments or over on Twitter because I would love to meet you. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram to follow along while I'm there. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe for a new video every Wednesday and don't forget to hit the like button. I'll see you next week.